This is the Seven Figure Standard Podcast, hosted by Arash Vasugi and Mikey Stiller, with mindset and strategies to help you break through and create personal freedom. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Seven Figure Standard Podcast. I'm Mikey Stiller, joined by my co host, Araj Vasugi, and we're so thrilled to be back with you for another episode. This week, we're going to be talking about something that is very near and dear to both of our hearts. It is a term that we resonate with and use a lot, and that is excellence. What is excellence and how do you embody it? So, Araj, why don't you kick us off? Yeah, this is an interesting topic. Um, Excellence. In my opinion, first of all, it's a habit. Excellence is a way of being. And so I want to ask a question to trigger everyone's mindset. Are you excellent? Are you excellent at what you do? Right away, whatever you thought of is how you feel about yourself. And I want you to own your excellence right now. I remember. Uh, There was a time in my life, my first year in this industry, I've been doing this for 17 years now. In this industry, my first year, I started really started improving, really started winning. And my mentor said to me, do you think you're the best in the industry? And I said, no, I think I'm becoming one of the best. And he said, that's the wrong attitude. He said, from now on, I want you to see yourself at the best in the industry. I want you to see yourself better than me. He said, the reason I'm so good at what I do is because I see myself at the best. And that's how I want you to see yourself. And I always tell this story because, you know, five years down the line, we're sitting and having coffee together. And he said, do you think um, you can outsell me? And I said, yes. And he said, you really believe that? I said, listen, you have such a huge advantage. You've been doing this for 50 plus years. You're a guru on the mountain. And he said, let's have a contest. So we playfully did. But that conversation changed my life. It's one of these conversations that really got me to really own who I was. And if you look at the qualities of excellence, uh, number one, The economy always rewards excellence and discipline, but how you see yourself is going to activate excellence in your life. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to be something until you accept that idea of yourself. So that's number one. Number two, people who are excellent are obsessed about deliberately practicing what they do, deliberately practicing their craft. I remember one day years ago, I read this book. Um, It was called The Carpenter, and it was a a book and a fable, and I loved it because he was talking about this carpenter who took so much pride in what he did, and he saw himself as an artist, and the book was written by John Gordon. It's an excellent read. Um, Anyway, from that moment, I really connected seeing my work as my craft after I read that book, and that's what excellence is about. The people who are excellent really don't care what you think of them. They have such comfort with who they are and their work they do and the rituals they practice. You'll find excellence and they know exactly why they're excellent. They are constantly hungrier to get better. And you could look at the opposite end of this. When somebody is an excellent, They may have created success, but then they bought into their success. And that makes them the most vulnerable, where they let their outside results dictate their identity. And they those those are those are the people who stop practicing. Those are the people who think they're better than everybody else. Uh, No one's better than anybody else. Somebody may be more aware in one area of their life than somebody else, but we're all the same. We all have infinite potential, but the minute you buy in to your results, when you're really doing well, you are the most vulnerable because you're a few decisions away from turning winning into losing because of complacency. Okay, so this this might be a trick question, but I'm curious to see what your answer is. 
is excellence and someone, you know, embodying excellence, is it more about who they are, what they do, or how they do it? All of the three. But everything starts with who you are. We have to get comfortable with who we are. Um, Mikey and I were talking yesterday and I asked her this question and I said, how many opportunities do you think are missed because of insecurity? And she said a ton. I said, it is enormous how many opportunities people will get ideas. They'll have opportunities, but they don't accept it right away because they don't feel that they're worthy enough. Mm -hmm. They don't feel that excellence. It's not that you become excellent. The core of you is already excellent. But now you have to develop and think, feel, and act like the person you want to become. That's why I said excellence is a habit. It's not what you do once in a while. It's what you're practicing every day. You know, world class isn't what you do once in a while. It's what you practice every day. So your language is so important, though, with excellence. I could, I've said this on this podcast before. Language is what creates programming. And language is the seed that you're planting in your subconscious mind. And your subconscious mind has no ability to think. It will take you on. So when you say, oh, I'm dumb, I did this, I promise you, you're, you are planting the wrong seeds in yourself. Mm -hmm. And I want everybody to watch today. After you listen to this, watch your environment. Watch how many people are talking based on the present results. The individual who emanates excellence is always speaking into existence, not their present results, but their future results. And so you'll, you could tell somebody from a mile away who is a victim. You could tell somebody who emanates excellence from a mile away. It, there's no accident, but they're so comfortable with themselves and they're obsessed about their processes. They're obsessed about measuring against their processes, not the results. And that's what excellence is. Araj, you know that saying, how you do one thing is how you do everything. That comes to mind when thinking about excellence, because if you're someone who is cutting corners, or if you're someone who is you know, really in tune with all of the small details, if you're someone who always goes the extra mile, or if you're someone who always just checks out a little bit early, these all go into whether you're a person of excellence or not. And I think that all of the concepts that you teach, both on the podcast, on our free events, but also in our elite programs, feed into creating a life of excellence. If you think about philosophy and standard, do you have philosophies and standards and are you holding them to live a life of excellence? What are those? And are you holding firm on them? Or are you just setting them and then walking away and expecting them to hold themselves? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good point because for me, life is about living the way we're destined to live. Now, everyone gets to choose what they want to create for themselves, um, but nothing happens. No one's going to believe in your vision until you believe in your vision. And your vision, in my opinion, is your mission. Your mission is so much bigger than you. And when you understand that, then the magic is in the work that you don't want to do, the work that is painful. You know, over the last 17 years, I think one of the big, biggest things that I've attacked in a really healthy way was consistently doing hard things in a great way. And those hard things became easy in my mind, because once you start doing them, you already know you could do them. And a lot of people are avoiding the hard things. We want to do the hard things in a great way, but don't think of them as hard. Just think of them as this is what I have to do. So if we stop resisting and start really compartmentalizing one action item at a time, excellence is just going to be a part of you and you're going to build confidence along the way. Confidence is in some people very hard to build because they make it bigger in their mind than it is. Confidence is doing small wins compounded over time is going to create great confidence. But you, the thing about confidence, you have to have an all-in commitment. If you don't have an all-in commitment, you're not going to build confidence. If you have an all-in, if you don't have an all-in commitment, you're going to be in bondage. You're going to be tight. You're going to be rigid. You're going to be analytical. And right now, if you're analytical, you're not letting go. You are not letting go. Um, I have a client that I work with one-on-one. -on -one, 
and he creates great results, but he's not even close to where he's going to be. And I am constantly and consistently working with him on letting go more. The more you let go, the more free you are. The more free you are, now you're in the spirit. Now you're you're driven by your instinct because your instinct is so powerful. And so excellence, you have to want it first of all. Like, think about this. I say this all the time to my clients. I say, I want you to measure your actions right now over the last 14 days. And if you'll measure your actions honestly, you're going to be blown away by why you're succeeding or failing. Everything happens by compounding interest. So if we measure our our actions, it's going to tell us how badly we want something. Mm -hmm. And personal development is not an option. It literally, like for the people who are excellent, they're obsessed with it. Now, I'm talking about the implementation because the ideas only work if you apply the ideas. The work works if you do the work. Um, But a lot of people listen to podcasts and they won't act on any of the ideas. They're not getting anything. They're just gathering information. And the habit of excellence is about implementation. But before the implementation, you have to build the mental toughness. You have to build the right mindset. And you have to have accurate thinking. A lot of people will come to me, do you believe in positive thinking? I say, I always say this. Positive thinking is a lot better than negative thinking, but I believe in accurate thinking, thinking from your goal, thinking from your future self, understanding and becoming more aware and more aware of the genius inside of you, that your spiritual DNA is perfect. But we've got to stop letting other people control our mind. Too many people are giving all their power away to everybody else. And one of the keys of excellence, go think of somebody excellent. And I promise you, you don't know how much hard work they've done to create that, how many habits they've created. You don't know what they're doing. They go, oh, that person was gifted. You have the same gifts maybe in a different area, but they work their butt off uh, to do it. And we have to build that hustle muscle. We have to build grit and we have to build work ethic. It's not going to happen without it. Absolutely. You know, I I have I had a question in mind, but after what you just said, you know, you said it take you have no idea how much hard work they put in to live excellently. But I feel like at this point, the pendulum has swung so far for you. It would be harder for you to be average than to be excellent because it's just become who you are. So at some point you cross that barrier of like, okay, this is just who I am. I do things a certain way. I think a certain way. I am a certain way. And it would be harder for you to go back and be average than to continue living excellently. Well, there's no question. It would be, uh, it's a habit now. Like I said, it would be so much harder not to. Like, I don't tolerate mediocrity in anything I do. In literally anything. Like, if I'm not going to do something in an excellent way, I don't want to do it. That's just my standard. Now, somebody else may be listening to it. They don't want the same things I do. But while I'm on this planet, I want to leave an imprint and I want to be my best. I want to be the best husband I can be. I want to be the best business partner I can be. I want to be the best teacher and coach I can be. I want to be the best leader I can be. I want to be the best brother, the best father, the best friend. Like that's my standard. Uh, I always think I'm cheating people if I don't tell them the truth. And I think when we go to honesty, excellence is about being brutally honest with ourselves. There's so many people who are not getting to the truth because they don't want to hear it. And it takes courage to hear it. You've got to be ready for it. But I think this excuse, and this is probably going to be a little harsh, but I'm going to be honest with you. I think when somebody says, I'm not ready, it is a bullshit excuse of them protecting themselves from who they want to become. I really, I really believe that. Why? Because I used to tell that story and it was a BS story. So I can own it of who I used to be. And when I would tell myself, well, when this happens, then I'll be ready. I was never going to be ready until I made the first move. Mm -hmm. I love the quote by Zig Ziglar. He says, you don't have to be great to get started, but you have to start to be great. And I love that quote because I was insecure. I was overweight. I was in a ton of debt. And I changed my whole life in a very short period of time. 
when I made the move before I was ready. And that's that's what activates excellence. It's not because people don't have it. They have it, but they've got to draw that out of them. Mm -hmm. Every single person listening to this can do so much better than they're doing right now. So much better. What's what's nails on a chalkboard to me, they say, well, in your industry, you could do it, but you don't know mine. I work with a lot of real estate people. I say, you're out of your mind. I said, do you know people in your industry that are crushing it? Yeah. Well, they've been, a, there's an excuse that comes out of it. There's a victimhood. Uh, they've been doing this for a lot longer than me. Who cares? You can own deliberate practice as part of your philosophy that I'm going to do the repetition to get so damn good that I'm going to be the standard in my industry and you're going to surpass the people who've been doing it for 10 years. Raj, that's so good. Do you what what role do you think decision or indecision plays in becoming excellent? And also, do you think that one of the factors is that so many times the masses think they have endless amounts of time, right? So there's no urgency. Well, decision is everything. Nothing happens until you make a decision. Every single person in their life right now is exactly where they want to be. And Earl Nightingale used to say that. I think that was such a great quote. Um, people who are excellent have definite objectives at one thing. They are all in. And then when they got that all in automated, they'll add another thing. And then when they got that automated as part of their identity, where it's really rocking, they'll add another thing. But the mediocre individuals are constantly losing focus. They're constantly distracted all day long. They're starting, stopping, starting, stopping. And the deal is discipline. None of this works without discipline. But if you're sitting there and you say, I want to be excellent, start seeing yourself as excellent right now. And say, I'm going to dedicate the rest of my life to bringing out excellence. Have a vision that is so much bigger than you. I want you to lead with a full heart. I want you to lead where you don't care what people think of you that you are demanding, not demeaning, that you are stretching people because they're always going to remember how you made them feel. When you tell somebody the truth, but you do it with a loving energy, they'll never forget how you made them feel. But you do the same thing, but you put somebody down, they'll never want to be around you. You know, they're, it's like the razor's edge between winning and losing. It's not what you do, it's how you do it and the energy you do it behind. And that's why... I'm forever talking about money is the biggest illusion. When you find your purpose, you find your vision, forget about how long it's going to take. The time is going to pass anyway. You might as well be excellent at what you do. When you commit, like I'm going to do this the rest of my life. Do I have financial goals? Of course. Um, But that gives me a direction. But I'm so focused on serving. It's going to take as long as it takes. Uh, There's a great proverb. um, It's a Zen proverb that says, I don't have it exactly right, but it's um, you show up everywhere you go. And and basically saying, this is who I am. That's how I'm showing the world. But we can change who we are if we want to change it. And excellence is a part inside of us that we've got to bring out. This has turned into such a good episode. I was smiling over here because when you said mediocre, I I thought of something. This is completely off topic. I'm going to tell a story. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have a two-year-old and it's April and we're still watching Dr. Seuss's Grinch every single morning Mm -hmm. right now. And do you know the beginning of the movie where the Grinch is like, I'm not going to Whoville during Christmas and he like chokes on Christmas. That's how I feel about saying average or mediocre. Like I just want to like choke on the word. Because the idea of being average or mediocre is so disgusting. There's just so much more that every single person can do. Why would you settle? Yeah, people settle because of the program. you got to understand, where does the programming start? It starts from your parents, grandparents, then school, and we try to conform. But when you become an adult, the only responsibility you have is to think. That is your responsibility. So when you're letting other people make you feel bad, nobody can make you feel bad unless you let them. And when you start acting from a victim, you're never going to win. 
Uh, but when you start owning your mistakes, I want you to own your mistakes as much as your successes. You are going to learn so much more from your mistakes. I was telling this story with a group that I coached yesterday. Um, my daughter and I were golfing on Sunday. And she was getting frustrated by a shot. I said, big deal. You see how many bad shots I've had? I said, this is life. You got to pivot forward. And I said, but let me tell you the secret. The secret is you're going to learn a lot more from your losses than your wins. And every time you win, it was because you were willing to lose. So don't get so upset about it. But this is where philosophy comes in. You know, mm -hmm. philosophy is creating one's life of how they automatically think about something. Imagine from this point on, everyone listening to this, excellence is what they expect from themselves. And this is not a pressure point. This is a standard. I am excellent. See, a lot of people, if you feel pressure, it's going to take you the other way. Excellence is not hard. It's just building it one day at a time, stacking those wins one day at a time, stacking your new identity by who you're showing up as one day at a time. So good. All right, Raj, let's get into an action step for today. Well, I want you to think about where am I excellent? There's an area you are already excellent. And how we do one thing is how we do everything. So if you could be excellent there, you could be excellent anywhere. And what I'd like you to do is make a habit that you are writing down exactly your perfect day the night before. Write it out as you are your best version of yourself, what you accomplish by the end of tomorrow's day in the present tense. Then you do it again in the morning during your morning routine. Now you're speaking good words into existence. You're speaking excellence into it and do it for six months. Watch what's going to start showing up and reshaping in your outside world. Perfect. Thank you so much, Raj. Thanks to all of you. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends and family. That'll help us reach more people with the Seven Figure Standard podcast. You can also leave us a rating and review and we'll see you next week with another episode. Thanks, Raj. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Seven Figure Standard. We hope you found the insights and strategies helpful on your journey to success. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform to help us reach more people like you. To learn more about Arash and Mikey and how Voss Coach & Co. can help you achieve your goals and reach new levels of success, visit VossCoachingCo.com. Thank you again for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode of 7 Figure Standard.